Alright, I just showed up my buddy Mike's and uh, beautiful fall day. Matter of fact, all the leaves are still falling and everything. But uh, uh, we're on a, our way, uh, a road trip. I know you guys like the road trip videos. So I think Mike's going to go pick up a generator. I think somebody, I, I'm not sure if they gave it to him or bought it or what, but it's pretty big. And he's going to go pick it up. There he is, look who it is. How you doing? The man himself. It's been a while. Let's see what he's got going on around here. Here's his, here's his big angel on the toys. Oh, what we got here? What's up? What's this? A circus tent here? What's this? A museum? I don't know if you guys seen this. This is Mike's uh, new reed engine. Doesn't look that big from here, but them wheels got to be uh, at least five and a half foot, six foot. It's a nice little uh, building you got here, buddy. Thanks. It's a 20 horsepower. 20 horse. Wow. You see these wheels here. I'm 5'8", and this is, this is about, yeah. The wheels themselves are probably uh, five foot wheels. Mm. Yeah, it needs some work, but, uh, you know. Everything it's does. It's a good project. Yeah. All right. Good challenge. But anyway, yeah. We're on our way. We're going to be, we don't know, we don't know if the guy's going to let us film or not. Yeah. But if he does, uh, we'll try and get it. If not, we'll get it getting loaded up or unloaded or something. We'll try and make a video out of it. And maybe if we see something along the way, we'll, uh, we'll film that. So. That's all we can do. All right. What do you say, buddy? You ready to roll? Let's hit the road. Hook up the trailer and go. All right. Let's move them out. All right. We're in an old garage here. I don't know how long. It's, it's not abandoned. I mean, the guy's leaving this place. But the, the garage is just uh, a catch-all for uh, a lot of old stuff. So uh, let's go take a look and see what my mic uh, got. I, I don't know how good the lighting's going to be here, but uh, we'll do our best. We don't know how long this has been sitting here. Well, let me get in your way, Mike. Oh, all right, yeah. my bowl full of water right there. <laughs> oh, rare. Huh. Water cool light. But uh, from what I understand, this used to run a, a laundromat, an industrial laundromat. This is the generator part of it here. Yeah, it was built in 1937. That's when the, that's when the generator Yeah. I don't know if you can hear Mike, but he just said the, the generator itself is 1937. And what what is that? I can't read it, Mike. What is it? Uh, Crocker Wheeler. Crocker Wheeler generator. And it's a straight eight engine, right? Yeah, it's a straight eight. It's a superior. Superior? Yep. All right. I'm going to try not to get in your way. And like I say, it's not the, the lighting ain't that great here, but... This is an odd unit because superior was known for their massive massive engines and this is a small unit by comparison so it's uh it's quite an oddity we'll get a better look at it when it's outside because uh, mike got a, he's got a jacket up now put it on these uh steel rollers how long has it been sitting in here since the 60s hmm. how long has it been weber um i said yeah late 60s hmm. You're just telling us it's sitting here since the late 60s. But uh, what's cool is uh, it's got a whole control panel here. With big knife, knife switches. Like I said, I was going to move it, but I guess that was silly. And there are the gauges, like I say. We'll get a better look at it when, it's, uh, when we pull it out. I'll try to get Mike pulling it up on a trailer. But uh, from the looks of it, it's got to weigh a couple tons. What do you think it weighs, Mike? A couple tons? Well, uh, the shipping weight from the manual says it's 6,800 pounds. Hmm. So, a little over wow. three Wow, a little over three tons. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, show you when Mike starts loading it up. All right. Mike's got it on his little roller skates here, and uh, I think he's getting ready to try and roll it sideways so he can center it in the garage. Look at him. Look at this animal. Look at him. Leverage. One piece at a time. A couple inches at a time. Look at him. Look at him go. Not bad, right? No. I was surprised the, the front was moving as you were moving the back. I thought it would go one, one edge at a time. I think having the rubber, having that rubber pad keeps it from sliding. Really yeah, helps I it. think so. Yeah. Mm. I gotta move this thing in the back now. I'll start with this box. Yeah. Okay, so. Just like this 
side okay. We don't know if we're going to roll it on the roller skates or, or okay. slide it up. Do you need like a, a piece underneath that to get up so it gets up on that or is that going to be able to hop up on that edge? Well, the roller should be able to hop up okay. on there, but again, I we can try to take it up on the rollers. And I mean, if it goes askew, All right. then we can just All right. back out. Sure. So, okay. Maybe you can steer it. You got a little hammer next to there, Mike. Maybe you steer it with the hammer. Where's that? Right, right in front of your face oh, there. Yeah. All right, good idea. All right. Ready? Uh, yeah, give it a pull. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Well, that, it looks like it might hold its, its uh, place, Mike, from the sidewall yeah, here. I think that'll keep it going. Yeah. This one, I mean, it's going to be perfect. perfect. Okay. All right, all right, yeah. Let's see what happens. Looking good over here. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, see how see how it flies. Looks good over here. Alright. Uh, okay. That's the heavy end. Actually it made itself straighter, Mike. This one's going a little askew, but it shouldn't go any farther that way because it can't. All right, all right, give, give it a try. All right, hold up, Mike. Hold up. Hold up, Les. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, it's yeah, it's on there. So I'll put the jack on it, put a toe jack on it, lift it up, twist, twist the dolly, and push it over a little bit. Alright, give it a bump, Lester. You're gonna turn yeah. the back wheels there, straighten it out a little bit. Bump. Alright. Cool. Keep going. Hold oh, this side is moving. Okay. Well, it's pretty straight on there now. It is. Pretty close. The front was starting to pivot. Pretty right. dead nuts on back here. I'm gonna put this, this rear one straight. Mike, you're starting to go skew on this one just a little bit. Yeah. Take the roller skates off here and put it on some uh, oak. Yes, yeah, thanks. So don't roll off. Alright, let's see if you can pull this out. He's in mud. He's in about uh, six inches of mud. You got it in four wheel, Mike? Got it in four wheel and I got the rear dip lock. Alright. See what happens. I'm going to try to go straight now. The rear wheel started to spin. Looks like he's doing it. Don't know, what, don't know what's going to happen once this hits uh, the mud. Keep on rolling there, get the street. Looks like he's got it. Alright. We'll go out here and maybe take a better look at this, or maybe we'll check it out once we're back at his uh, house. Wow, 7,000 pounds. All right, we're back at Mike's house here, and uh, we're all on hook, so uh, he's got a little better lighting here. Maybe uh, we'll get a rundown. What, uh, let us know what we got here, Mike. All right, well, it's a, it is a 1937 Superior a GA8. Uh -huh. oh. So you, you get go. Superior the diesel, yep. yep. Yeah, so it was built in 37 in Philadelphia. Uh, it was originally installed in the White Star Laundry, which was kind of an industrial linen kind of clothing cleaning place that you have for a, a school or a, not, a, not a school, but a hospital or a hotel. So the story goes it was installed there uh, along with a steam generating set 
uh, because PSE and G at the time could not supply enough power to this uh, uh, laundry. Like I said, yeah, it was built in 37, so it's a superior engine. It's a Crocker Wheeler. Straight, straight A, right? Yeah, straight A, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Let that. me go over here because we got the wind coming in my camera. I don't want, I don't want to ruin the, ruin the sound. You know what? I was just looking back here. This it says uh, Crocker. Crocker Wheeler is that is that common, Mike, or is that a? Well, they were they were a common manufacturer at the time, but you know, unlike GE and Westinghouse and a few of the others, they didn't really stick in business much past the '60s. So they they they, all, they kind of really dissolved in the '50s. But yeah, we got a couple tags there. So it's mm. a 60 kilowatt generator, uh, 240 volt, three phase. I don't believe it has a neutral, so it's uh, three phase only. Um, 1200 RPM, so it's 60 cycles, three phase AC power, runs at 1200 RPM, so it's a six pole generator. Uh, gen set, or the engine obviously 1200 RPM unit. So, water cooled exhaust manifolds. The, the story goes that again, they use the cooling water from this to preheat the water for the steam boiler. Um, again, for the engine and I'm sure for the laundry process as well, they need quite a bit of hot water. So, but yeah, this is the, this is a package set. It was not shipped with a radiator hmm. uh, for that reason. They, they utilize the waste heat from the engine um, in the in the process. Okay. So like you, you, I think you said it was 6,700 pounds. Yeah, the literature. Uh, I think it's 6380 something. So about probably about 6,500 pounds as it sits. Okay. It's funny you mentioned literature. Here's something that's even even more impressive than the engine. Oh yeah. Mike's got the original literature for this. Yeah, let me see that. And it, and for us it's, it's a local engine. It's always stayed around the area. Yep. So we got first we got an operator's manual. Auto. Auto engine. Yes, yeah, yeah. So Superior was owned was a division of Auto Engine at the time. So that's a nice nice thick book. In, in good shape too. I yeah. guess. I guess with, with these manuals, nobody even touches them once you buy them. I have a feeling. Yeah, when well, the thing was installed, they they knew how to ran it, to, how to run it, and they probably just sat in a, somebody's mm -hmm. desk drawer. Yep. But it's pretty comprehensive. Fuel filter goes into the fuel pump operation, the injectors. There's an injector nozzle, oh, no, and that's a that's a pump assembly right there. So mm -hmm. this is just again an operator's manual. There's a little cutaway of the engine. So that's a, that's for that's actually for a steam injector right there. Now, how you tell if it's a good running engine? What's that? The manual don't have big uh, greasy fingers. Yeah, on you're it. right. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't always looking and fixing something. Right. So cooling water. So yeah, there's a basic operator's manual. But some additional uh, information. So what does that say? Philadelphia, PA. Uh, that, that says Holmesburg oh, okay. and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Wow, that's even closer. Holmesburg is twice, maybe a five miles from me. Really? Yeah, as huh. a bird flies. Wow. All right. Well, here's the. Uh, so we got a booklet on the voltage regulator, which uh, we did get with this. So, just a theory of operation, um, wiring schematics, testing procedures. Very important uh, information here to have. We got a booklet. Wow, you got a, you got a book on everything. Yep. This is the American Bosch fuel injection equipment. So this is equipped with an American Bosch fuel pump and injector nozzles. You even got the little Bosch guy there. Hmm. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen him. No? no. Look at him with little, his little uh, driving goggles. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been a flyer. Yeah. He must have been oh, a pilot. Oh, you think so? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. We oh, got no, the, a race car driver. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. right. So we got uh, the, the, so it's an APE style pump. We've got the eight cylinder version. They go through all the different strokes of the pump plungers, how to time it, cutaways, part numbers. Really good, really good information to have wow. here. Right in the 80, this stuff is 85 years old. Yep, yep. And look at the other beautiful picture. Oh yeah, so this is the catalog. Scoutcraft will love that, oh, the, way yeah. they, the way they oh. make pictures on yeah, catalogs well. and stuff. So yeah, this is a little uh, bulletin. So it's just a, kind of like a salesman, uh, salesman's book. Huh. So this is a really oh, nice. It's got the loosely po holes poked this. in it. There's yeah. a, beautiful pictures of various installations. 
just kind of oh, touting their product. Here's where you can you can use them. That's right. Hotels, Stores, buildings, garages, plans. you name it. La laundries and cleaning plants. There you go. Yep. Yep. So there's I think there's a few testimonials in here. Oh well, there you go. Becker's Standard Hatchery, Vineland, New Jersey, have hmm. found the superior GA2 15 kilowatt unit a dependable source of power, and like many others, have reduced power costs to a remarkably low figure. Oh, so nice. and these are all like local installations. So we got a Delaware. National Supply Company of Delaware. Remember, th these were built in Philadelphia. Right. So, I mean, it, it, these are catered and shipped and sold in this in this area. Here's, so. a, here's an example of your uh, your pump, your water pump, yep. getting fresh water. Yep, yep. Very interesting. So, I mean, it, it goes on and on, and the various models. We have the GA8, the big boy, the mm. 60 kilowatt unit. Here's a shipping weight right here. Yep. 77. This thing's getting heavier and heavier. Yeah. I know. I know it was heavier because we towed it. Yeah. Oh, but incredible. it's incredible. I mean, again, how it's wow. built. Parts. Yep. This it's you know yeah. pride and workmanship, lubrication circuit. Look. Oh, look at this. San Francisco superior diesel generator must have been on the. There it is, right there. The engine room. There you go. That looks like, is that a 6 or an 8? No, that's a 40 kilowatt, so that must be a 6. Mm. Yep, yep. These, these were sold a lot. As a matter of fact, I, I have found some information online that, said, that states that these were installed in Liberty ships uh, during the Second World War as uh, uh, standby power. Because hmm. I believe they were steam-driven ships. So they would have had a steam turbine uh, main generator, but this would have been an auxiliary power unit. So yeah, Pretty interesting. Yep. What else you got here? Oh, look at this. Oh, uh, yeah, so this is this is actually this generator right oh. here. So this was shipped, this was mailed to the White Star Laundry to say, here, this is your generator and these are the dimensions of it. So that they could plan the right. installation. Make a base. So yeah, that's a beautiful piece wow. there. And this is really neat. So this is correspondence from National Supply Company of Delaware who sold the engine to the White Star and Pittman Laundry Incorporated, Pittman, New Jersey. So just Get a, get a good picture of that. It says, gentlemen, we wish to thank you for the courteous, courtesy shown to the writer during his visit to your office today and are pleased to confirm herewith our verbal quotation for one 60 kilowatt superior diesel generating set. We will furnish one superior diesel engine, model GA8 such and such. The standard equipment furnished with this engine unit consists of engine mounted box type cast iron base, fuel injection pump, fuel transfer pump, and all the things mm -hmm. All the extras that were on the engine. I'm gonna use the date and everything. March 8th, 37. Right, well, then it continues. So, part two one Cracker Wheeler alternating current generator capacity 60 kilowatt, three phase 60 cycle, 240 volt, 1200 RPM. Hmm. So, and there's what it costs right there $5,395.35. Wow. You, what you have to do is get a calculator, a, a fun calculator, right. to find out what that is. Yep. That's got, that's got to be a half million dollars. Very truly yours, the Philadelphia plant, F. Hoder, sales department. Cool. And you tell it's typed up with an old typewriter. Yep, yep. Very cool. Amazing. That is. And look at the nice box it's in. Look at the box held up that nice. <laughs> <All them years. laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, we got that information there, and there's still some, a little bit more. So we got that, and then underneath. Hmm. So this here. Is that laminated? This is laminated, and I believe this was intended to be hung up on the wall next to the engine and this was just reminders for operation so that would see it's got little brass eyelets so oh, you're yeah. supposed to you know tack that to the wall mm -hmm. in the engine room and just say hey you know maintain this and you know do's and do nots pretty much yeah that's a nice piece of cardboard too mm -hmm. laminated cardboard yep not really laminated well it's got some it's, kind of it's got a coating on it, on it. Yeah. yeah not not laminated like we know probably of. like cellophane or something yeah. like that yeah so whatever it. process they used back in the day yeah that's even more interesting. We got that. We got some original drawings of the engine, fuel filters. There's actually this is this, and there's two more copies oh, of yeah, that. Yeah, mechanical drawings. Yep. And then we got instructions for the safety control, um, which mm. is a monitor for high engine temp and low oil pressure. So if, if the thing overheats or goes low oil pressure, it'll shut the engine down. Which not all not all equipment came with that. That was a special order right. piece. 
and then we got some. It's funny on the other side. I seen that the safety control. Yeah. I, I said to Mike, I says, I didn't, I wouldn't think they had any kind of safety control back then. He goes, Oh no, that's for the engine, that's, that's not, <laughs> not the operator. They don't care about the operator. <laughs> we care about the engine. Yeah, and that that made perfect sense. So, and I haven't even opened these up yet, but I believe these are oh, certified prints. Yep. These oh. are prints of the engine, I think, drawings of its installation. Mm. Uh, I don't know if we should open these no, up. I don't know, here. don't know. There's nothing on the back. There's, You're looking at the front right yeah, now. Yeah, well, I think it, it flips open both ways, yeah. so it's it's just Here's dimensions. Certification. Yeah, certified by National Supply. Oh, you know what? This is this is where the the base is made. Yeah. I see. It the says blueprints for the base, the exhaust, exhaust the water. Exhaust water. Yeah. So yeah. So that was the company that actually installed it. Mm -hmm. National Supply. Huh. I think there's that one, and then there's another one here. I don't know what this is either. Like I said, I haven't actually looked through these yet. Hmm. Oh, okay, so this looks like the, the building it was put in. So, there's the there's the gen set, right? There's the exhaust. All right. Comes up and exited the roof, or exited the wall and a muffler. They had fuel oil storage tank and the piping for that. Yeah, so this is the White Star Pittman Laundry. These are the prints for the building that was put in. Hmm. March 24th, 1937. There you go. It's funny. So, I wouldn't think back then you would even need these kind of stuff, you know? Well, so here's the interesting thing. Like I said, oh I don't... Boy. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. oh boy, oh boy. So anyway, one last bit. <sighs> so, we got some... This is the envelope this is all in. So this was the Hospital Service Plant of New Jersey the White Star Laundry. So, like I said, this wasn't a laundromat. This was the hospital service. So right. all big, your big hospital building. beds, the, the sheets, the clothes, mm -hmm. you know, blankets, right. they all went here to get clean. Right. This is this was this, in, this place might have had hundreds of washing machines. Sure, big industrial yeah. site. Yeah, and this, yeah, this was, ain't your quarter. This, this is a state operated uh, right. operation here. This isn't, you know, Bubba's right. laundry. Right, right. You know, Aunt Susie's laundry. This was a Hashimoto. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's pretty cool. As like I said, that's, yeah. that's almost as cool as the, the engine itself. I, I thought so. Yeah, I thought so. so. Yeah. Well, he's got his hands full, so uh, chances are you're not going to see this running for, I would say, years. Years. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah, I am. I'm being more than honest. So, uh, all right. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna call this one done. What do you say, Mike? Well, we gotta go get the control panel. Oh, that's right. All right. You know what? I'm not, we're not gonna call it done. Just as amazing as the engine. The control panel was was about. Four foot by six foot, made of slate. inch and a half inch slate. Yeah. Big knife switches we got. Knife sw oh yeah, yeah, the knife that. switches. So Meters, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, we well, said we get some lunch and go get that. Sounds like a plan. All right, we'll see you guys in a few. Here's that safety controller. All right, we're back here at Mike's and uh, there's this big reed back there, but. Uh, we got this, what do you call that? Uh, display plate? What is it? Uh, Control that panel. Yeah, yeah, switchboard. Switchboard. Would be the technical name for it. This is the switchboard. Wow. So. Me and Mike, me and Mike put that in there. I don't know if you could tell, but that's, that's an inch and a half. Easy. Easy inch and a half by three foot by six foot of solid slate. I think that's the last thing I'm ever going to move, Mike. <laughs> I think I think it had to weigh 600 pounds, oh, yeah. every bit of 600 pounds, and we uh, finagled it. And oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. The, the you can't see. The you can't see the copper on the bottom. Oh, but even even copper, copper is the heavy as hell, yeah. and the whole back is full of it. So that that thing uh, weighed a ton, literally almost a ton, half a ton at least. <laughs> so uh, let me get up there and uh, maybe maybe I'll get get up there with us and. Uh, We'll see what it is. So come on. All right, we're up in the back of the truck here, and uh, maybe I can get Mike to tell us what these are. I can tell these are big knife switches. Mm -hmm. These are big Frankenstein knife switches. Yeah, they're they're three pole, double throw switches. So the way I understand the setup is they had two or three sources of power here. They had Atlantic City Electric, so C A C E. Right. That's that would be the utility. And then they had the diesel generator. Diesel, right, it says diesel over yep. here. And then they would have had a steam generating set as well. Plus it says cellar here, so. Right, so you got cellar, pump, 
so I, I would imagine that these would these would be the main loads. So you could have the pump, whatever pump that was. Right. You could either have the pump on diesel or utility or vice versa or some, something along those lines. I don't know yet. Once we once I flip it over and look at how the bus bars are set up, I could probably trace it out and figure out what on earth they were trying to do here. All right. What, uh, what kind of instrumentation we got up here? We got an amp, amp, amp meter yes. and so volts? Two, two amp meters and uh, a volt meter. So we got a high range amp meter. So zero to 300 amps. And then we got a low range amp meter, which is zero to 50 amps. And then we got a voltmeter, zero to 300 volts. So this would be your main line current, your, your load current. That would be your output voltage from the main generator. And this amp meter is likely your field current. You got to keep an eye on your field current, make sure that the generator's not tr drawing too much field. So you got those three. In the center here would oh, yeah. be, so you'd have a big knob here, which we'll show you that. I have the rheostat in the barn already. So uh, that would be your manual voltage adjustment uh, for the generator's output. And that small knife switch there would probably be your field disconnect, your field mm -hmm. switch. So you could isolate the field and shut the field off. Um, but like I said, I have this this set did have an automatic voltage regulator. I have that in the barn. We'll look at the manual rheostat and the automotive automatic regulator in a second. Alright. So let's go check that out. Right. This, this video is probably getting a little long. Yeah. Alright, watch your step. Watch your step getting off, buddy. Alright, this power has the stuff Mike was talking about. Is that is that fixable, Mike? Well, I'm gonna have to take it apart and see how bad it really is. It was a you know extreme, extremely damp garage, and I think the roof might have been dripping on this. Probably dripping right on. It. Yeah, I mean mm -hmm. it looks real bad, and it probably is a real bad too. So this might not be salvageable. Hmm. But but if it is, I'm sure you could do it. Thank you. That's, is, it, is this thing with the with the big fire on it? Is that part of it? No. Oh no, that's a little load set. So it's just was that an experiment or yeah. no? No, it works no? great. It, uh, you know, you just can't you're burning the goddamn the house down now. Well, yeah. You're, 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 you, that's why you don't operate it now. <laughs> you operate it outside. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this. Okay. Yeah, so there's a... I, I'm not really sure what's going on here. So we got six gangs of re, uh, rheostats here. You get one, two, three, four, five, six. So I, I have no idea really what that's set up to do. Um, I'm going to have to look in the book and see how it was wired originally. But this is the automatic voltage regulator here, this General Electric thing. Hmm. So that would be the automatic field. Regulator. That's what's nice about having the original books. You might you might oh, get yeah. something out of there that's going to help. Absolutely. Even if it's just a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's some more copper bus bars there. I'm not sure why they were removed. That's this here. And then I got a bunch of gaskets. Like there's a head gasket. This one looks like a. This one's actually blown. You can see right there. Where oh it's. yeah. So old head gaskets for it. There's some new gaskets in there too, which is helpful. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of bits and pieces here. You but know. at least you got it right. It's in rough shape, but I think uh, it might have a it might have a chance coming back to life. Someday. So, someday. All right, I'm going to end it right here, buddy. All right. What are you saying? Enough of this? Enough of this. All right, Take here it we easy. go.